Hey, welcome back. Um, so in this video, we're going to look at the central block here. Uh, so I'll open this up quickly. So this central block is basically just used to space uh, these two outside plates apart by a certain distance. Um, and we want them to be 60 millimeters apart. So this length in here is uh, 60 millimeters. So essentially to save cost, we've actually uh, designed this part so that it can be cut out of a standard aluminium section, extruded section, uh, which is called rectangular hollow section, RHS. So this particular size is a off the shelf. You can buy this stuff uh, in a 40 by uh, 60 by three millimeter wall thickness. So probably when we were going to make this part, um, just quickly an aside, this is what aluminium extrusion looks like. You can just buy it in long lengths off the shelf. Uh, so essentially, um, any sort of aluminium supplier, they'll have a, a good website and they'll usually have a catalog you can download. So in this case, aluminium, Action Aluminium is a place in Bayswater um, which sell aluminium extrusion. So we'll click on uh, the catalog button here and we'll scroll down to see what extrusion sizes are available to buy. And we'll go down, you can see there's, there's tubes, there's solid bars, you can buy a T-section, uh, this L shape is called aluminium angle, uh, and you can also buy a channel, which is like in a C shape, um, square tube, all that sort of thing. So we'll go down to rectangular tube, and we'll find that um, we can buy a 60 millimeter wide section, which will be great for this application. And we can see that it's 60 by 40 by 3 millimeters. Uh, it's also got the material type here um, for reference as well. So it could, we know we can buy uh, this aluminium. Uh, off the shelf and it's super cheap um, relatively speaking and then um, we'll be able to make this part so pretty much they'd just buy a long length of this tubing they'd cut off uh, do a 45 degree cut here and then a straight cut here and then they'd mill these holes in the sides and the great thing about buying the extrusion is you know they wouldn't have to mill out all this aluminium uh, inside because the extrusion is always is already hollow uh, so it's a good great cost saving part there uh, cool, so we'll go back to our uh, main assembly here that we're trying to make. So we could make this part as a standalone part file, uh, completely fine, that works. But what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you guys how to uh, draw a part within the context of an assembly, which allows us to draw the part um, uh, in a way where it's actually, you know, we it's we got these interfacing holes here. In fact, I'm just going to start the part and... Um, you guys will, will see what I mean as I go to create it. So we're going to go up here, we're going to go to File, we're going to go to New, and then we're going to create a new assembly, not a new part, a new assembly. And we're going to click OK. Then we're going to place a couple of components. So we're going to go, we're going to navigate to our, the parts that we've been building in the last few um, videos. So we're going to go here, and we're going to click on our upper link plate. So we could just place this straight away, but instead we're going to click on this little pin here, which will allow us to place multiple components at once. So we're going to click left click once to place the first one. And then we're going to right click here. We're going to flip the second one around the Z axis twice. And then we're going to left click to place that part. And we're going to click the tick up here. So you can see we've placed two components here. Uh, one of them has an F here next to it. That means it's fixed in space. If I try to pick it up, I can't move it. The other one has a little dash, which means it's free to float around. Uh, in SOLIDWORKS, by default, the first part you place will always be fixed in space, and all the following parts will be free to move around. That's exactly what you want. Uh, so the objective is for us to add mates uh, between components uh, so that all the parts are fixed in space and not free to move. So we're going to start by adding a couple of mates here by clicking on the paperclip button. And then you just choose which things you want to mate together. So in this case, we're going to click on this cylindrical face and this cylindrical face. And that is going to align the two axes of those two um, cylindrical faces together. And we're going to click on the tick button here to create the mate. You can see how that's now holding these two axes um, so that they're aligned. And now we're going to add another mate. So it's worth mentioning here that I'm clicking on, on cylindrical faces, not edges. So I could click on an edge. Um, that will give us a different result to clicking on a face. So just 
note that that's um, you will get different different results based on what you click on. Um, in this case, since we're aligning uh, the axes um, of these cylindrical faces, I could click on this cylindrical face or this one, and we'd end up with the same result because they all share the same axis. So I might click on this inside one here. And you can see how it's just aligning the axes, so that works for us. So click on the tick there, and the last mate will add will be between this face here and this face here. And then we'll add an offset here by clicking on this button of 60 millimeters, like that. And we'll click on tick. Cool. So now we'll find that the little dash next to this part here has disappeared. Um, we can no longer move this part because we've added in those mates. The mates that we just added um, appear in here. So we can expand this menu and we can see the concentric one, concentric two, and this distance mate. And uh, cool. And then that means this part now is fully defined and it's locked in space. And you can also see down here, just like the sketches, it also says fully defined, which is great. So now we're going to draw our spacer block um, within an assembly, which is a pretty cool thing you can do. So I'm going to click on this little arrow here. I'm going to click on new part. I'm going to click on part. I'm going to click OK. And now this first thing is you've got to click on the starting face to start the first sketch. So I'm going to start on this face of this part. Cool. And then you can see we've got a new part here, part three, uh, highlighted in blue, uh, blue text, meaning that we're editing this part currently. And we've got a part editing interface uh, up here again, which is pretty familiar. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to use the convert entities button here to convert uh, the sort of geometry from this part into our new part sketch. So you can see we've converted uh, the outer edge there um, into a line in our sketch, which is great. And then we'll do the same thing for these holes. And this is where the in-context parts become super powerful because we're now drawing a new part with these holes in the correct locations based on the locations from the other part, which is really cool. So it's saving us a bunch of time and it's linking the two parts together. Um, so I'm now going to draw in the side profile here of the uh, spacer block. I'm going to add in a perpendicular constraint here I'm going to add in a parallel here. Again, just adding in relations here to avoid needing smart dimensions, uh, which is what we're trying to do uh, throughout all of these videos. And this one here, I'm going to go for a 45 degrees like that. Brilliant. I'll add in a smart dimension between here to here. And we'll set this to 28. We'll set the length of this line here to 40. Notice how there's a slight difference here. If I if the if I take this dimension, see how it's not quite aligned. That's taking the vertical distance between those two points. Whereas this dimension, now that it's aligned, it's taking uh, a slightly different measurement, basically. Uh, which and this is the one we want. We want the aligned one. So we'll click on 40 there. You can see that's aligned like that. 40. That's good. And then we will. Add our final mate over here between this point here and this point here, and we'll make this 42. The reason that's 42 is because we got a spinning component in here of this size, and that gives us a small amount of clearance there of two millimeters between our 40 millimeter radius um, interfacing component. Cool, so that's that done. I'm going to exit this sketch, then I'm going to expand this little menu here next to our part. And then as you can see now we've got like a part uh, interface here. We can click on this sketch like normal, go to the features button and click extruded boss face. Now what we'll do, we'll click on the area we want to extrude and we'll go up to surface and then we'll click on the other side and that will extrude it across to fill that gap. And we'll click on the tick button. Now what we'll do, we will create a new sketch to make this part hollow on this end face. We'll go normal to, then we'll do an offset entities of, uh, let's go three millimeters on this part here, and then we'll reverse that. And that'll give us a nice uh, three millimeter offset rectangle. And then what we'll do, we will cut that out using an extruded cut. And we'll go through all on that. And then we can see we've got um, the majority of our part there all modeled in now. Which is great. 
And um, but yeah, the, again, the super powerful thing with drawing this part in context is we've got these holes that we've transferred from these outer plates into our new part. So that's just awesome. Because um, you know, if we were to draw this part as a separate file, we'd have to dimension the locations of these holes individually to some sort of reference location, um, which takes a bit of time. You'd have to sort of jump between models to, um, to make this part. And instead we've done it super quickly by drawing the part within the assembly, which is a really great um, skill to know how to do. Now we're gonna create a new sketch here. We're gonna do it on the top face and we're going to go normal to. Then I'm going to draw a circle here and here. So we'll do a couple of holes and then one here. Uh, and then for these holes, I'm just gonna do 20 millimeters from this side here, 20 from this side here. And I'll actually make this one, since we want these to be the same, I'll make it a function. So I'll click equals, click on the one we want it to be identical to and click the tick button. So we got a little summation symbol there indicating it's a function, um, which is awesome. Now what we'll do, I will set the size of this hole to 5.1 and I will set this hole here equal to this hole here. And then we will make this 10 millimeters from the edge and then I will make these two here, oops, center of both of these circles vertically aligned. Now they're both fully defined, which is brilliant. What I'll also do, I will um, pick up on the the midpoint of this line, hopefully. Like that. And then I will hold the shift click, pick up on the middle of this circle and then go horizontal. So that now horizontally aligns that with the middle of the part. And then I will select from here to here and I'll set this to 25 millimeters. And then I will set this one to 25 millimeters like that. So I think these might even be 30 millimeters. Yeah, it looks more like it. Cool. Um, so that's that done. Uh, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, create a, a pattern. So um, what I might do, probably the best approach. Yeah, let's, let's cut these through. So we could use a sketch pattern, but I'm going to use a feature pattern again, uh, just because they're more robust and they keep the sketches um, cleaner as well. So I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to extruded cut um, just these rear holes first, these ones here. We go through all on these like that. And then we'll click on the tick button. And now what I'll do, I'm going to do a linear pattern here. I'm going to, it's going to have already selected uh, this hole feature. And then I'm going to select this as my direction along that sort of vector. And then I'm going to have three instances at 50 millimeters apart, just like that. Boom. And then we've got a heap of holes in rows like that, which is awesome. And then for the central circle, I'm firstly going to just select only the middle circle here. I'm going to set that one to through all like that and click on tick. And then for our final one, I've just realized I could uh, draw, I could pattern this, but that would actually pattern the second hole kind of here and then it would take a notch out of this bottom side. So I'm actually just going to go back into our top sketch here and just add in another 30 millimeter circle here. Uh, and I'm going to set that to 50 millimeters apart. Possibly could use a pattern here, but I'm going to just draw it manually. Horizontal, and then I'll set this and this to equal size. Exiting this sketch, I'll then click on the sketch again and do a cut. And we'll just go just this circle here, and we'll go up to next. So that'll just cut it through that first layer. Brilliant. So that's the majority of that part complete. I think the only thing left to add now is a quick little fillet on this edge here. We'll make it two millimeters. And there we go.
So that's that part complete. Um, what we can then do, we can click on the exit part here. You can see we've got a new part here now, which uh, references the holes. So you can look at the side view, you can see these holes go all the way through, which is just awesome. Uh, and all the bolts align properly. So now the last thing we're going to do, we'll just click a quick rebuild, and then we'll right click on this part, and then we'll go save part in external file. So this will save it as a new part. Uh, well, it will, it'll still reference the assembly, but we'll, we'll be able to give it a part number and it'll have its own in, independent part file. So we'll click OK on here. Uh, and now what that's done, um, if I go to our part um, folder, we'll see that part three now is here within our, within our folder. So it's not quite the right part name, so I'm going to right click on this part and do rename part. And now we can call this our, with our part numbering standard, so ch2102 underscore o uh, 1 underscore o 06, and we'll call this upper linked RHS, something like that. If you're ever wanting to rename parts, always do it within SOLIDWORKS. Don't do it inside of Windows Explorer because it'll break the link. Um, whereas if you do it within SOLIDWORKS, it will fix all the links for you. So you can see here, this will rename the document uh, within the assembly, uh, but it's only once we go to save the whole lot that it will edit the Windows file. So we'll click on that, we'll click yes. And now what we'll do, we will save the whole Windows file by doing a control S like that, save all. And then we'll save this assembly in upper link and we'll call it upper link assembly. So 0, 02, 0, 01, 0, 00. So your assembly is always 00, zero is your subassembly. So instead of putting a part number in here, we use a double zero. And that indicates that this is the top level assembly for all uh, for this uh, subassembly. So now I'm going to type in upper link, something like that, and then we'll click save. Okay, since we've already made this one, I might call it something else. Let's just call it upper link. Um, ASM, something like that. Uh, you guys can call it what you like, and we'll save that. And then we will save with in context references. And then we'll click save all, like that. And now, our assembly is saved. And we can open this part, like this. And you can see that within this part now, we've got this boss extrude, which has got these little arrows here, which indicates that it's it's depending on geometry from other places, <laughs> basically. Um, so you can see that there, which is really cool. So um, that's the end of that video. Um, Cool. So yeah, just quickly uh, to show you guys, uh, lastly, the power of in-context parts and good sketches. Um, we'll open up this part here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try changing one of our critical dimensions here and seeing what happens to all of our other parts. So let's make this 250 instead, something like that. And then I'll click exit here. You can see that our part has updated without any errors, which is pretty awesome. And now if we go back into our assembly here, we can click rebuild. And this part here, not only has it shifted into the correct location, but all the holes still go all the way through. So I just thought that was a pretty cool thing to show you guys that um, this is a very robust assembly. You know, if we needed to, for whatever reason, change the length of this member, I could literally change it in one place and all of my other parts would update appropriately. So that's a pretty sweet... Um, CAD model, um, where, you can, where you can maintain it that easily. So all the things that I've tried to show you guys is to be able to achieve, achieve that, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I hope that makes sense, and um, we'll see you guys in the next video.